I got tired of having bad makeup because I wasn't that good an actor and I needed something. I don't know, I've never made a severed head, but I'll try. <laughs> Tell me about the first time you blew up a head. <laughs> it didn't go well, because I don't know anything about shotguns. <laughs> no, no. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. This is a show about tenacity, about getting back up when you get knocked down. This is what we do in order to become successful. Anybody that has succeeded in anything has screwed up in a lot of things, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. My guest is Christina Cordum. She uh, runs Ravenous Studios. She is a makeup and effects artist. She's done uh, masks and special effects for some shows that you have definitely seen. I'm super, super excited to talk to her about it. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. On tonight's show, uh, we have Christina Cordum of Ravenous Studios. It's uh, uh, makeup, masks, special effects, all sorts of cool things. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's, Thanks for having me. Yeah, 100%. I'm really, I'm excited to, uh, I, I don't want to, <laughs> I was going to say nerd out on this stuff, but that's <laughs> kind of, uh, maybe that's a stereotype. No, uh, it's fun. What are you talking about? Monsters are the best. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Tell me a little bit about the, the studio, like what you're doing now. Uh, well, I make prosthetics for film, basically, for oh. TV and film, and yeah. I also make props. Um, that's a side business that's kind of popped up and yeah. taken over in some way. Well, so you make masks that people will Basically, wear. Basically, masks, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, yeah. somebody needs to, like, let's say they're taking a character and they want them to be 80, and yeah, they're yeah. only 40, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. I make the pieces to do that. To make that happen. Yes. Like, would you put, if I wanted a mask mm -hmm. to look like I was 80, or just to make me good looking, <laughs> just give me one of those. No. Like, I want, a, I want a Brad Pitt mask, would you like, uh, like, Put it on, you capture my face, and then... Yeah, so uh, the first thing we always start with is usually a live cast, because we want it to fit perfectly, because that's how it's going to fool the camera. So we do a live cast, and we use silicone now, not just... It used to be we used alginate, which was like a natural product. What's that was that? It's made out of seaweed, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Silicone's way better. Now, now we've advanced, <laughs> and uh, we use two-part medical silicone, which is really really great. Um, basically you mix the two components together and it's a little bit like frosting and then it firms up after you know like anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes yeah. and you have an exact copy of your face. Yeah. And the awesome part about that is then I can make multiple copies of your face to do the different parts of the prosthetic oh, okay, that we need okay, to do. Okay, so okay. just the nose maybe or just the ears or just the cheeks you know I can kind of break it down into all the pieces that I need. Have you, have you ever made, uh, have you made masks for yourself? Oh, all the time. That's all how the, I started. Yeah. That's how I started was doing my own makeup. Yeah. <laughs> like doing your own masks well, as well? Well, I started in haunted houses, actually. Okay. And I started as an actor. And I got tired of having bad makeup <laughs> because I wasn't that good an actor and I needed something. <laughs> I realized that I, I wasn't cutting it as an actor and I needed like something really, really scary to help, you know, push it. Then I don't need to say anything. <laughs> you can just be so, that, that actor. Yeah, you just exactly, stand there and look. exactly. Yeah? That's what I, you know, it's true. I, I fell back on because <laughs> I wasn't that great an actor. But I started making my own makeups and, yeah. and, and coming in makeup to the haunted house. And yeah. after a while, they, um, they're like, wow, you're getting pretty good. Do you want to join the makeup team? So that's, yeah. that's my path You would show up strange. in makeup to the haunted house. Uh, it's a funny story. I just, because of my schedule, because I worked in, I was actually at the time a network engineer. And I didn't have time. I'd get off work, slap on the makeup, r rush, in, rush hour traffic in the Bay Area uh, to the haunted house. There was just no time for me to, to not come in makeup. Yeah. And then I'd leave. And nobody actually knew what I looked like. So, <laughs> so they just started calling me Evil Clown Girl because they just had no idea what I actually looked like. I just, they just knew I showed up as an evil yeah, clown every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. It actually really helped me later because um, a lot of makeup artists, they go to makeup school or whatever, but they haven't really worn the makeup and gone, you know, it's it's one thing to wear makeup for 10 minutes and another thing to wear it for an eight hour shift. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it really helped me when I was on shows like Grimm and stuff like that, that, you know, I knew what the stunt guys were going through. I yeah. knew kind of what it felt like to wear a prosthetic that yeah, long yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and what, what it felt like to take it off yeah. and just like, you know, sensitive areas of the face and, yeah. you know, things that are tough. So I was so grateful later that I 
I did all that work earlier <laughs> to kind of have empathy. Well, so tell me about, about, about Ravenous then. Like, what does a day look like for you oh, with your own business? It's a little nuts. I'll wake up and the first thing I do is answer a ton of emails because any, any business owner knows the hell of paperwork, right? All yeah. the emails, all the requests for things six, eight months out, yeah. you know? So just trying to juggle all that. That's, I think, one of the toughest things I found about owning the business is while you're working on the current job, you're working also on the next five Just jobs. Find the next five jobs. And then um, I go out to the shop, and I usually have anywhere from a 12 to 18 hour day. Yeah. Just depending on what's due, you've when got it's a, due. Uh, you've got an actual shop that you go into where you yes. where you make everything. That's correct. Right next to my house, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> in that if I make a disaster or spill something all over myself, I can just run in and take oh. care of it. Yeah, but it's, um, it also was because I have a family. Yeah. You know, and I had shops in warehouse districts and all that stuff, and it was it was very tough, you know, on the family in that I was just gone for 18 hours a day. Yeah. Now they can at least pop in and, oh, she's still alive, you know, <laughs> sort of thing. All right, well, are you, like, we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about your past. Are you ready for, you ready for a drink? I, I, I suppose so. Okay, okay, I, okay. So I do, I like every time I get a little shaky, nervous, um, Jack makes amazing drinks. Okay. They always taste great, um, and they're always magical and different. So, okay. um, Jack, are you, are, you, are you ready to put your concoction together? The question is, are you ready? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Tonight I've got for you a uh, uh, new moon rising. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add 1.5 ounces of the hop kavaka. Good healthy pour. A little bit of acid phosphate, just three dashes, roughly a quarter ounce. And then we have our imbu vermouth that's been turned into an aperitivo, half ounce of that. And now time for a little bit of champagne. We're going to drink the champagne today. Are you ready for that, Sean? Ah, ah, yes. ah, the bubbles. Bubbles just for you, buddy. Yeah. And we're gonna use three ounces of champagne to start and three ounces of our guava soda. And now time to ice her down. All right, now that we are ice cold and silky smooth, I'll be adding a little bit of rose water. And there you have it, a new moon rising. Wow. I told you. That's impressive. It's like a lifesaver. It is. It's so pretty. <laughs> it is pretty. I'm going to pick mine up from the middle. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to, we got to, oh, I'm it's scared. heavy. It is heavy. All right. Very we have cold. to, yeah. Uh, Carefully. There we uh, go. <laughs> Proust. Thank I don't know you. what, the, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. That's guava. It's really good. <laughs> this is really good. All right, it's good. All right, you, are you good? I think so. All right, I'm probably gonna, how about if you lift it up again? Okay. Later, then I'll lift mine up again later. <laughs> okay. Then we can, I'm so careful, <laughs> like, of the, okay, it's huge. All right, now, Tell it's me, beautiful. A, it's yeah, absolutely after, beautiful. after we've had beautiful some popka vodka, <laughs> tell me about your childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I get the feeling that you liked this type of stuff when you were really young as well, like certain type, like, oh. like like movies or I'm gonna heavy give away metal my age. or like yo at the double Star, Star Wars. Wars, Star Wars, yeah. And my dad, see, I wasn't allowed to see any of this stuff, but my dad would like psst, come over. I saw half of Alien through a reflection in the window because I had to duck behind the couch every time my mom came in. <laughs> alien, serious. How old were you when you saw Alien? I was like 12. I was like 12. That is and some I serious, was, yeah. I was like, wow. this. But you know, I, I was a kid in the Bay Area. I didn't think there was any chance of me getting involved in movies or any of that. The joke in the family was I was their worst nightmare. An artistic kid was their worst nightmare. They were like, no, no, please, please. Can we swap? Can we swap this kid with somebody else that's not? Well, then you grow up to like create <laughs> everybody's worst nightmare. Yeah. Uh, yeah like it being fun. able to put together prosthetics and mask and. Well, it's interesting. My dad's a mechanical engineer. Yeah. And, um, you know, he he didn't get what I was doing. You know, I, I broke them in gently. I, I actually. <laughs> 
How do you, started in how do you, engineering, how do you, how do you, then I oh. switched to English, <laughs> and then I switched to creative arts. It was just a slow, uh, slow breaking of their hearts. But um, no, that's actually I think that that's every parent. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, oh boy, we're done. Oh boy, yeah, this is she's gonna be living at Clean home. Clean out the basement. <laughs> Here she comes. Yeah, yeah. but um, it, it's funny. My dad actually early early in my career, very early when I was screwing everything up right and left, um, yeah. came to visit and uh, he was helping me with stuff and he was like, you're you're doing what I, it's just a different field, but yeah. he's realizing that part of the reason I love special effects so much is it's, I was never happy if something was all artistic or all technical, I, yeah. I wanted both. Yeah. And it's the first field that I found that I really got to have both. I got to have both because yeah. there's definitely you got to know your chemicals and you got to know about mold making and you got to know about you know if you're doing animatronics you got to yeah. know a lot of mechanics like the algae on your face <laughs> algae you have to on know your face. about how that works <laughs> yeah um, yeah you have to know how all this works and then there's also the creative side of it you know I get to sculpt monsters which is really super fun yeah that's awesome. When I started out, I had a full-time job, and then I was basically working on film for free. What was your full-time job? materials. I did database design. Oh, okay. I was okay. a database designer. Your DBA yeah. designer. <laughs> yeah, database oh, yeah. designer. So um, I did that during the day, and then I did film, independent film on nights and weekends. And, yeah. and it was always the conversation of like, I don't know, I've never made a severed head, but I'll try. <laughs> if you want to take a risk, give me, buy me some materials and I'll try it out. <laughs> and, um, and that was a lot of, uh, you know, it's crazy. Portland was my school, yeah. you know, and it was all these independent filmmakers were my teachers in a way because they believed in me and they gave me materials and they let me what was try your, stuff what out. What was your first severed head? Do you remember? Oh, yes. Yes, it was for David Walker. I love that we're having this conversation right now. <laughs> Tell me about your first severed head. Well, it yeah. was really my first fake head. Okay. That's really what it was. And, um, my first fake head. <laughs> and, you Wait, know, what's the difference between a fake head? Oh, because the severed head would be like, yeah, oh, it, it, he, like weird and bloody. We were going to blow up his head on, on camera. <laughs> That's yes. worse than a severed head. <laughs> Tell me about the first time you blew up a head. It didn't go well. I know. Oh, it didn't go well at yeah. all. Because I don't know anything about shotguns. <laughs> no, 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 this keeps getting better. Like I'm just picturing just like a cantaloupe, like, well, and then you're like, no, no, it's gonna be a shotgun. Uh, well, blast, um, so. well, actually, I called the person that did the head explosion on scanners, and I asked him how they did it, and he said two shotguns rigged up. That's how they blew up the head. Yes. Was two shotguns rigged up. Yeah, sawed off shotguns. Sawed off shotguns, like coming I from different angles. I found out sawed off is very important part of the whole <laughs> process. Don't, They're illegal, by the way. Sawed off shotguns. Don't are forget illegal. about that. <laughs> Did you find two sawed off shotguns? No, I found one. <laughs> and it wasn't sawed off, and it just put a hole in the head. That's it. It just. <laughs> You this do have like, like you have this engineering attitude to it because <laughs> as you're talking about it, the whole time I'm like, you're talking about blowing up a head. <laughs> is this a thing in Portland where they like to make movies where they have to blow up heads? Um, <laughs> is it like uh, this underground scene I don't know about? That's... Well, there's a ton of creatives. Yeah, there's yeah, a ton yeah. of creatives doing stuff way outside the box. Yeah, and it was a, a great place for me. You know, I landed there and. Um, Fell in with some, you know, indie filmmakers, and just it was a great hobby. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah, really yeah. fun. Well, you worked on um, a, a show that I've actually seen an awful lot. Grim was a show. Yes, yes, I was. I, I worked uh, in the special effects makeup trailer with the special effects makeup team. Barney Berman. Yeah. From the Berman family, it's a famous makeup family. He was the department head, and he was very nice. Well, that's like, like a, a dream local come yoke, true for you, was. right? Yeah. You know, you know, when I got that call, it was weird because you know, here I am, a database programmer, and I'm, you know, I get asked to join the team, and I'm like, you know, now where had it's where a had dream he job. seen your work? Like, where did he know about you? Do well, you know? actually, the guy from Scanners said, "Hey, you should call this this." This talented that's coming that's artist. That, that's right. She knows about sawed-off <laughs> shotguns. Give her a phone call. Yeah, no, it was a recommendation. So this was like your 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 corporate job, uh, would be doing so, which is crazy because you wouldn't want to call that a corporate job, but that's you working for a company. Yes, before, I was working for Universal Studios. Yeah, yeah, before you working for Universal Studios. Yeah, that's NBC awesome. Universal. Yeah. yeah, it was um, it was great. It yeah. was the, the a dream job and the best job I've ever had. You know, I had a lot of pinch me moments because, you know, here, you know, he's grown up in this famous makeup family, so of course he has a lot of famous makeup friends, you okay. know, and I turn around, it's like one of my idols, and you know, every week it was that way. It was like, okay, 
<laughs> don't freak out. Don't, don't freak, freak out. out. Don't Only freak say out. smart things. Only say smart things. <laughs> so yeah, it, but I mean, wow, what an opportunity to yeah. meet the people that had seen their work and admired their work so much. Yeah. And just you know, meet them in the flesh and get to work side by side with them and assist them. Yeah, it yeah. was it was nuts. You you moved on to doing your own thing. Like what what pushed you into that? Why not well, just stay doing um, stuff for Universal? Well, you know. It was a rare opportunity to show that large, having all that creature work coming here. Um, and I realized that that wasn't, you know, that was a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Like yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Chances of another show with that heavy uh, effects team needed was probably not gonna happen. Yeah. And so I just realized I had to start working on expanding my business and basically preparing for the future. So a lot of time, Grim, we'd have a hiatus of about three months. Yeah. And I tried to always make sure I did a feature every time. I just really worked hard. So I never got any time off, really. I just went straight from, you know, we'd wrap on Grimm and like the next day I'd be on a plane or, you know, I'd be in the shop building stuff. So I just knew that I had to get my skill set up and I had to get my shop built up yeah. to the point that when Grimm left that there would be something. Now, did you already something. have, so when you started doing that, did you have... Ravenous did it exist, or were you just doing uh, like business as you? Um, oh no, I, I started like... Ravenous in 2009. Oh okay. Yeah, I started Ravenous in 2009. I had started doing film in 2006. Okay. That's when I started doing the, like the little side gigs. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, getting into it, and then I realized 2009, I was like, I need to make this like a real business because I started making prosthetics and nobody else in town was making prosthetics. Everybody was purchasing them either online or from friends. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm making stuff. Yeah. You know, I need to actually have a business to do this and I don't know how to start a business, you know? <laughs> what no, is it, nobody like, what, in my family that, you That's know, what's do. so interesting yeah. to me. Like, not only are you starting a business, but it's not like a coffee shop where you're like, oh, yeah. I know. I think I you know, that was, that's something a lot of people don't appreciate. Um, it wasn't like I could call someone up and say, how do I start a business like this? Yeah. Like, there's no books, how to start a special effects business. <laughs> I guarantee it, I've looked. There's no such thing. Um, Wait, I or I everyone's like, don't do it, don't I love, do it. I love that you, I love that you looked. You're I like, looked. How to start a business making Monster Max for fun. Like, yeah, that's the problem was every gig was heart pounding terror. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because I had no mentor. I went down to LA for the International Makeup Artist Trade Show. Yeah. And I just basically parked myself in front of the there's demo a, booth. There's an international makeup makeup artist trade show? Yes. With with like like prosthetic stuff that's there yes. and everything else. Yes. What does it look like Comic Con? Like when you're kind wandering of, around? Yeah, yeah, it has booths and people wandering around doing demos of crazy makeups. And yeah. I that's what I did. I just parked myself in front of a demo booth and just took a lot of notes and paid a lot of attention. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna figure out how to do this. <laughs> And that's how I did it. Did you ever get caught with, uh, not, not, not like arrested or something, but where you had a prosthetic or you had something with you that was just in a weird situation where you've got like a head in oh, a bag or going something? Through, and like, yeah. <laughs> getting stopped by uh, Lithuanian security. Cause Lithuanian <laughs> security? Yeah, in the airport. Getting stopped in the airport because I'm covered in blood Wait, and my in... bag is covered in blood and it looks like I'm fleeing a murder scene. Okay, yeah, please. <laughs> and no one speaks English, by the way. Wait, wait, so no you're... No one speaks English. You're in Lithuania. I, I'm in Lithuania. What were you in Lithuania for? Was I, was, for... I was on a horror film out there. <laughs> <laughs> and we that, put, that. <laughs> and all the effects got pushed onto the last day. Yeah. And it was, it was insane. It was like, <laughs> on top of it, there was a strike in the middle of the last day yeah. by the crew because they hadn't gotten paid. So we were shut down for like a good, like, I don't know, four hours? Yeah, well, you want to avoid those Lithuanian strikes. <laughs> Those well, are, when, it, when it, that four hours missing means all my effects were compressed. Now, you know, I had 12 hours to do it. Now I got eight, you yeah. know, sort of thing. Now you just got spray bottles with blood <laughs> that are coming Pretty much. Out. Yeah. yeah, and it was like I, I had the, you know, I was putting the director of the work, the producer. I was like, hey, this is all your fault. Come over here. Hold this syringe, you know. I was a little <laughs> nuts. I was a little nuts by the end. I was like, <laughs> and then um, I was going to miss my flight. I, scrape my stuff into like off the table just literally scrape it into my trunk close it up get in a taxi the actors actually helped me pack up my room because i'm not going to make my flight the yeah. way we're going um and we rushed to the airport not one person 
on the entire crew told me I had blood sprayed all over my face. <laughs> Not one person. And I get there and I get in line like I'm barely going to make the flight. I get in line and of course, you know, I look like I'm fleeing a murder scene. Oh, man. It was bad and yeah. no one speaks English. So I got hauled out of the line. <laughs> My name's question. Dexter. Let me on the plane. <laughs> yeah. Got questioned about it and you know, and nobody understood what I, and I finally said, movie, movie, we're making a movie. And they're yeah. like, oh, and then everybody everyone knew about the movie. Now that you've had Ravenous Stew, you've had it for how long how long is it? Two thousand nine? Ten, ten, ten years. years now. It's been open ten years, yeah. Yeah. Like what do you what like what are you thinking moving forward? Like what have you learned? What have you learned so far, I guess, in running a business? Because nobody knows how to run a business like this. Like people oh. are gonna, people are gonna come to you well, and say, "Hey, how do I, how do I start this kind of a business?" Well, I'm so lucky in that I've, in the last five years, I've found some mentors, um, people that own shops, yeah, and other areas. So that was like a huge, huge thing. Yeah. Um, just you know, who have been kind enough to give me advice and kind of like some business tips and stuff. Because it's, it's hard. I mean, I'll get basically handed a hundred thousand dollars by a production and I'm like whoa okay I have to you know budget exactly because if yeah. you go over they're not paying extra no so if you it's, go over it's, that's you that's me yeah, uh, yeah, I mean yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. take the and there, there's been yeah. gigs where I haven't made any money because you know somebody poured a mold wrong or right. you know like that's the other thing you start hiring people then you start introducing other elements um, into the mix where yeah. people are doing things you know maybe somebody forgets to close a bucket lid and then it dries out and the next day you're going to use it and you're like oh god it's really stressful it's it's very very stressful but it's I love the challenge I yeah. guess so that's that that's amazing you looking just to continue to grow keep doing what you're doing like what what else I would like to expand. I would yeah, like, to like expand. what? What would you do if you weren't to if you weren't doing this? Oh, Anything man. else you can think writing. of? Writing. You'd be writing. I would be writing. Yeah. I, I mean, that's still a love of mine. Yeah. So, I've got. I think where I'm headed now is I'm I'm writing a lot of scripts and I got a stack, and I was like, yeah, maybe I'll produce these. You know, maybe yeah. I'll make my own. Do your own makeup for the show. My shows. own stuff. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll see. That's that's. I'm looking at my retirement years going, maybe maybe I don't want to sling <laughs> blood anymore, but I want to hire people to sling blood for me. Well, listen, I, uh, well, wait, we have to, we have to eat this, uh, this other thing that, oh, are you okay eating the other thing yeah. that's on there? Wait, there's a. How do you eat it? I don't know. I don't eat the, the leafy part on the top. How do you eat it? You can eat the whole thing. Damn it, don't listen to him. <laughs> Just eat the parts that look like you're supposed to eat them. Just take a eat bite out of it. Okay. Out of it. Okay. okay. So I guess a weird <laughs> cheers on that. Cheers. Thank you for coming on the show. Yes, thank you. I for love having everything me. about this. I, I, of course, I was a big, I'm a big theater guy. I love sci-fi. It's huge. I love talking to you about this stuff. Um, cheers. cheers. All right, here we go. I'm gonna. Okay. Oh wow, it's. All right. How do we do this? Oh, oh. it's really good. Yeah, it's good. It's crunchy. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the show. And if you like what you see and you want to watch other people, you know, face plant in the world, which, which, which I like, and recover, then subscribe and ring the bell. And if you ring the bell, then you're going to know when we do other things. And if you have a screw up you think would be great on the show, go to fups.com. We'd love to have you on the show.